and the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. Genesis 6 verse 4. Greetings, celestial seekers. Today, we dive into one of the most mysterious and compelling verses in the Bible. Who were these Nephilim? Were they really a product of divine beings mingling with humans, or could there be a deeper, hidden history behind these ancient tales? Join me as we unravel the story of the Anunnaki, the ancient gods of Sumer, and explore how these enigmatic beings may have played a role in shaping humanity itself. Could these heroes of old be more than mere myth? Let's explore the possibilities together. The Birth of the Anunnaki Theory the Anunnaki theory first captured the world's imagination largely thanks to the work of a man named Zakaria Sitchin. In the 1970s, Sitchin published a series of books where he claimed to have decoded ancient Sumerian texts, revealing a hidden history of our origins. According to him, the Sumerians, one of the earliest known civilizations, wrote about powerful beings called the Anunnaki, who came from a distant planet called Nibiru. These beings, he said, weren't gods as the Sumerians believed, but rather highly advanced extraterrestrial visitors. Sitchin's interpretation of Sumerian cuneiform tablets suggests that the Anunnaki arrived on Earth around 450,000 years ago. But why did they come here? According to the theory, they were searching for a vital resource, gold. Nibiru, their home planet, supposedly had an atmosphere that was deteriorating, and they needed gold to repair it. Gold, due to its unique properties, could be used to reflect sunlight and stabilize the atmosphere of their distant world. But mining gold on Earth wasn't easy, even for the Anunnaki. The physical labor required was immense, and this led to a dilemma, how could they extract the gold without exhausting their own resources? This is where Sitchin's theory takes a fascinating turn. The Anunnaki, using their advanced knowledge of genetics, supposedly decided to create a new species to serve as their labor force, human beings. Sitchin claimed that the Anunnaki took early hominids that existed on Earth at the time and altered their DNA, combining it with their own. The result was the creation of Homo sapiens, humans, as we know them today. This new species was intelligent enough to follow instructions, capable of hard labor, but still subservient to their creators. Essentially, humans were designed to mine gold for the Anunnaki. This idea of humans being created as workers may sound strange, but think about it. How did ancient people like the Sumerians know so much about astronomy, mathematics, and engineering? How did they construct massive ziggurats and plan cities with such precision? Sitchin and other theorists believe that much of this knowledge was passed down from the Anunnaki themselves. Many skeptics, of course, question Sitchin's interpretations, pointing out that translations of Sumerian texts are not always clear-cut, and that he may have been selective in the way he interpreted the cuneiform tablets. But for many, the Anunnaki theory offers a tantalizing explanation for the gaps in our understanding of ancient human history. Could it be that we owe our very existence, and the early achievements of civilization, to these ancient visitors from the stars? The Anunnaki theory raises countless questions. If the Anunnaki did create humanity, what does that mean for our understanding of evolution? Were we truly engineered for a specific purpose, and if so, what happens when that purpose is fulfilled? Are the Anunnaki still out there, observing us from a distance, waiting to return? Or is this simply an ancient story, misinterpreted by modern minds searching for meaning in the distant past? These are the kinds of questions that have captivated many since Sitchin first introduced the theory. While mainstream archaeology and science may dismiss the idea, it continues to spark curiosity and debate. Let's hear what you think, could there be more to this ancient tale than we've been led to believe? Feel free to share your thoughts and theories in the comments. The Creation of Humanity and the Garden of Eden One of the most intriguing aspects of the Anunnaki theory is the idea that they played a direct role in the creation of humanity. If we look back at ancient Sumerian texts, we find stories about how the gods shaped mankind, and many of these stories bear striking similarities to the biblical account of the creation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. But what if these stories weren't just myths or religious allegories? What if they were a reflection of a real event, where the Anunnaki used their advanced knowledge to engineer humans for their own purposes? In the Bible, Adam and Eve are said to be the first humans, created by God and placed in a paradise, the Garden of Eden. But in the Sumerian version, we find a figure named Adapa, often referred to as the first man, created by the gods. According to the Sumerian texts, the god Enki, one of the leaders of the Anunnaki, was responsible for creating mankind. Enki is depicted as a wise and cunning god, often helping humanity, which makes him a key figure in the Anunnaki story. 
Sitchin's interpretation of these texts suggests that Enki and other Anunnaki were frustrated with the initial attempts to create a workforce from the primitive hominids on Earth. The early versions were either too weak or too unintelligent to serve the needs of the Anunnaki. After many failed attempts, Enki and the others decided to combine their own DNA with that of these early beings, creating a hybrid species that was smarter, stronger, and capable of understanding orders. This, according to the theory, was the birth of modern humans. This new species, humans, were designed to mine the gold that the Anunnaki needed. But as the story goes, something happened that the Anunnaki didn't expect. The humans began to evolve beyond their intended purpose. They developed knowledge and consciousness, becoming more than just workers. Could this be what the biblical story of the forbidden fruit represents? In the Bible, Adam and Eve eat from the tree of knowledge, gaining wisdom and awareness, something that was forbidden to them by God. Some theorists believe this part of the story reflects humanity's unexpected growth in intelligence, something the Anunnaki hadn't planned. The Garden of Eden itself might not have been a literal garden, but rather a symbolic representation of the controlled environment where early humans lived under the watchful eye of the Anunnaki. According to this theory, humans were initially kept in a kind of paradise, where they were cared for and supervised closely. But once they gained too much knowledge, they were cast out to live on their own, no longer under the direct control of their creators. The parallels between the Sumerian texts and the Bible are hard to ignore. Both describe a time when humanity was created by a higher power and then given knowledge, which ultimately led to a separation from that power. Were the Anunnaki the true creators of humankind, and were their experiments the real reason behind the stories of Eden and the fall of man? This theory also opens up another question, if the Anunnaki did create us, does that mean we are still connected to them in some way? Are they watching from afar, waiting to see how we evolve? Or have they left us completely, leaving behind only the ancient stories and myths to remind us of our true origins? Whether you believe in the Anunnaki theory or not, it's a fascinating way to look at our history. It challenges the traditional views of creation and forces us to think about our place in the universe in a different light. What do you think? Could these ancient gods have played a role in shaping who we are today? Let's discuss it in the comments. The influence of the Anunnaki on ancient civilizations. The idea that the Anunnaki had a hand in shaping not just humanity but also the earliest civilizations is a central part of the theory. Ancient Sumer is often considered the first great civilization, and it's believed that the Anunnaki's influence didn't stop at creating humans, they also guided the development of early cultures. This theory suggests that the Anunnaki shared advanced knowledge with the Sumerians and possibly other ancient peoples, helping them build some of the most remarkable early societies. Let's start with the Sumerians. They were one of the first cultures to develop writing, mathematics, astronomy, and complex city planning. Their knowledge of the stars, seasons, and time was incredibly advanced for their era. According to some researchers, this leap in human understanding could have been due to the Anunnaki's direct involvement. These extraterrestrial beings, with their vast knowledge, might have taught the Sumerians how to build cities, organize governments, and develop laws. The famous Code of Hammurabi, one of the earliest known legal codes, could be seen as an example of this influence, providing structure and order to human society. But the Anunnaki's supposed impact wasn't limited to Sumer. If we look at ancient Egypt, for instance, we see striking similarities. The Egyptians, too, had a pantheon of gods, many of whom were believed to interact directly with the pharaohs and guide their rule. Could these gods have been Anunnaki in another form? Some scholars believe that the Egyptian gods like Are, Osiris, and Thoth share characteristics with the Anunnaki, particularly their ability to influence the natural world and offer knowledge to humanity. The pyramids of Egypt, often seen as one of the greatest mysteries of the ancient world, are another point of interest. How did a civilization with no advanced machinery or technology manage to construct such massive, precise structures? Some theorists argue that the Anunnaki either directly helped the Egyptians or passed on knowledge that allowed them to achieve such feats. The story doesn't end in the Middle East or Egypt. Many ancient cultures across the globe have legends of gods or beings who came from the sky and gave humanity knowledge. The Mayan civilization, for instance, had a deep understanding of astronomy and a calendar system so advanced that it still baffles scientists today. In their legends, the gods were said to have descended from the heavens and brought them wisdom. Could these Mayan gods have been another interpretation of the Anunnaki? If the Anunnaki were traveling around the world, influencing different cultures, it would explain why so many ancient civilizations, separated by thousands of miles, share common themes in their religious and mythological stories. Some researchers even point to the mysterious structures found in places like Stonehenge in England or Puma Punku in Bolivia as evidence of Anunnaki influence. 
These sites are incredibly old and show signs of advanced engineering skills that seem out of place for the time periods in which they were built. How did people with basic tools manage to construct massive stone circles or perfectly carved stones weighing hundreds of tons? The idea is that the Anunnaki might have either helped directly or passed down knowledge that these early people used to create such awe-inspiring structures. This theory of the Anunnaki influencing early civilizations raises another important question, why would they do this? If the Anunnaki came to Earth for gold, as Sitchin suggested, why take the time to help humanity develop complex societies? Some believe that the Anunnaki saw humans as more than just workers, they may have seen potential in us as a species. By helping us grow and evolve, they could have been ensuring that we would become capable of not only serving their immediate needs but also developing our own cultures and civilizations that could last long after they were gone. This brings us back to the idea that ancient stories and myths may not just be symbolic. Could the legends of gods descending from the heavens be early humanity's attempt to explain their encounters with the Anunnaki? And if the Anunnaki truly helped shape these early civilizations, what does that say about the knowledge and technology that might still be hidden within these ancient cultures? The possibility that the Anunnaki played such a pivotal role in human development opens up a whole new way of looking at ancient history. It challenges our understanding of how civilizations rose to power and how human society became so complex. What do you think? Could the Anunnaki really have been the force behind the rise of early civilizations? Share your thoughts in the comments and let's continue exploring this fascinating idea together. The Anunnaki and their influence on religion. One of the most compelling aspects of the Anunnaki theory is the idea that these ancient beings didn't just create humans and influence civilizations but also shaped the religions that have guided humanity for thousands of years. The connections between the Anunnaki and the gods described in various religious traditions around the world are hard to ignore. Many believe that the Anunnaki were seen as gods by the early humans they interacted with, and over time, these beings became the basis for the deities worshipped in many cultures. Let's begin with the Sumerian religion. The Sumerians had a rich pantheon of gods, many of whom were the Anunnaki themselves. These gods were believed to be responsible for creating and overseeing all aspects of life on Earth. The Anunnaki were considered powerful beings who had direct control over humanity's fate. They were worshipped, revered, and feared. In Sumerian mythology, the gods lived among humans, often interacting with them and guiding them. Could these interactions be actual encounters with extraterrestrial beings, misunderstood by early humans as divine intervention? As time passed, the stories of the Anunnaki likely spread and evolved as different cultures adopted and adapted them to fit their own beliefs. When we look at other ancient religions, we see similarities that are difficult to dismiss. Take the Babylonians, for instance. Their gods, like Marduk and Ishtar, bear striking resemblances to the Anunnaki in both their powers and their roles. The Babylonians inherited much of their culture from the Sumerians, including their religious beliefs, which further suggests that the Anunnaki might have continued to influence human spirituality long after their initial interactions with the Sumerians. Moving beyond Mesopotamia, we find even more intriguing connections. In the Bible, the story of the Nephilim, those mysterious beings who were the offspring of the sons of God and human women, could be linked to the Anunnaki. Some believe that the Nephilim were actually the children of the Anunnaki, beings who came down to earth and mixed with humans, as described in the book of Genesis. This idea has led many to wonder if the biblical sons of God were, in fact, the Anunnaki. If this is true, it would suggest that the origins of Judeo-Christian beliefs are directly tied to these ancient extraterrestrial beings. Other religious traditions also have stories of gods descending from the heavens and directly influencing human affairs. In Hinduism, the Vedic texts describe powerful gods like Indra and Vishnu who control the elements and shape the world. These gods are often depicted as coming down from the sky in Vimanas, flying machines used to travel between worlds. The descriptions of these Vimanas are eerily similar to modern ideas of spaceships or advanced vehicles, and some theorists argue that this could be another example of the Anunnaki influencing human religion and culture. In Greek mythology, the gods of Mount Olympus, like Zeus and Athena, frequently interacted with humans, often in ways that directly affected their lives. The gods were depicted as larger-than-life figures who lived above the earth but still descended to govern and guide human affairs. Some researchers suggest that these gods could have been another interpretation of the Anunnaki, filtered through the lens of Greek culture. The idea of powerful beings descending from the sky to rule over humanity is a recurring theme across many different cultures, which raises the question, could all of these myths be telling the same story, just from different perspectives? Even in Mesoamerican cultures, such as the Aztecs and Mayans, there are legends of gods who came from the sky and gave humanity knowledge. The Mayan god Kukulkan, often depicted as a feathered serpent, 
was said to have descended from the heavens and taught the Mayans advanced knowledge about astronomy, architecture, and agriculture. The resemblance to the Anunnaki's supposed role in teaching humanity is hard to ignore. If the Anunnaki were indeed the inspiration for so many gods across different cultures, it would mean that their influence has shaped not only ancient religions but also the spiritual beliefs that continue to guide people today. The idea that these ancient beings were mistaken for gods helps explain why so many cultures share similar myths about divine beings who descend from the sky to guide humanity. This theory challenges traditional religious beliefs and raises important questions about the origins of the world's religions. If the gods we worship were once real beings from another planet, what does that mean for our understanding of spirituality, faith, and the divine? Are the stories we hold sacred actually accounts of extraterrestrial contact, passed down through generations and transformed into religious myth? The idea that the Anunnaki shaped early religion offers a new way of looking at human history and spirituality. It forces us to reconsider what we know about our gods, our origins, and our place in the universe. Could it be that the divine beings worshipped for millennia were, in fact, ancient visitors from beyond the stars? If so, what does that mean for humanity today? Let's discuss this in the comments and explore the fascinating possibilities together. The Anunnaki's Legacy in Modern Society As fascinating as the ancient history of the Anunnaki is, one of the most intriguing aspects of the theory is the idea that their influence didn't end with the ancient world. Some believe that the Anunnaki's legacy can still be seen today, not only in our societal structures but also in the way modern humans think, organize, and even manage resources. It raises the question, could the Anunnaki's ancient interactions with humanity have set the foundation for how our world operates today? First, let's consider the hierarchical systems that dominate our societies. From governments to corporations, nearly every major institution follows a strict chain of command, with leaders at the top and workers at the bottom. This structure mirrors the way the Anunnaki were said to have organized themselves, as described in Sumerian texts. The Anunnaki had a clear division of roles, some were kings and leaders, while others were workers or soldiers, all playing specific parts within a greater plan. This top-down organization is something that many theorists believe was passed down to humanity, influencing the way we build and manage societies. In ancient Sumer, kings were often seen as representatives of the gods, acting as intermediaries between the divine Anunnaki and the human population. This idea of a ruling elite chosen by or descended from gods is something that has persisted throughout history. Even in modern times, we still see remnants of this in monarchies and other forms of governance, where leadership is often passed down through family lines, much like the Anunnaki hierarchy. But the influence of the Anunnaki may go even deeper than social structures. Some believe that the way we approach technology and innovation today could be traced back to the knowledge the Anunnaki shared with early humans. In ancient times, the Sumerians were pioneers in fields like astronomy, mathematics, and engineering, knowledge that some say was too advanced for the time and must have come from the Anunnaki. If this is true, it could mean that the Anunnaki set humanity on a path of technological progress, one that we are still following today. Take, for example, our modern fascination with genetic engineering and artificial intelligence. The Anunnaki were said to have created humans through genetic manipulation, blending their own DNA with that of early hominids. Today, we are on the verge of being able to manipulate genes in a similar way. Advances in CRISPR technology now allow scientists to edit genes, potentially changing the future of human evolution. Could it be that we are rediscovering techniques once used by the Anunnaki? If they altered our genetics to create us, are we now picking up where they left off, exploring the same scientific frontiers they once mastered? Artificial intelligence, too, has parallels with the Anunnaki's relationship with humans. According to the theory, the Anunnaki created humans to serve them, to carry out the hard labor they did not want to do themselves. In many ways, AI is being developed for the same reasons, to perform tasks that humans find too difficult, time-consuming, or dangerous. Just as the Anunnaki sought to create intelligent workers to help them with their tasks, we are now creating machines that can think, learn, and even solve problems on their own. Could it be that our drive to develop AI is a reflection of the same desires the Anunnaki had when they created us? Some theorists also suggest that the Anunnaki may still have an influence over the global elite. They argue that powerful organizations, governments, or secret societies may have inherited ancient knowledge from the Anunnaki, using it to maintain control over humanity. The idea is that certain influential groups may be following the Anunnaki's original plan, keeping humanity in a certain state of development, ensuring that they remain in control. This leads to another important question, if the Anunnaki were so advanced, why did they leave? Some say they may not have left at all. The theory suggests that the Anunnaki might still be watching, waiting for the right moment to return. 
If they do return, what would that mean for humanity? Would we be prepared to meet our creators, or would their arrival challenge everything we know about ourselves and our place in the universe? The possibility that the Anunnaki left behind not just stories and monuments but systems, technologies, and perhaps even secret knowledge, forces us to reconsider how we view our modern world. Are we continuing the work they started? Is the rapid advancement of technology a sign that we are on a path they set in motion long ago? Or are we moving towards something even bigger, something that might reconnect us with our ancient past? Whether or not you believe the Anunnaki are still influencing us today, the theory opens up a lot of thought-provoking questions. It challenges us to think about where our systems of power come from, how our technology is evolving, and what our future might look like if the Anunnaki do return. Could they be watching us even now, observing how we handle the knowledge and tools they may have given us? Let's keep the conversation going. What do you think about the possibility that the Anunnaki's influence continues into modern times? Could their ancient guidance still shape the way we live, work, and advance? Share your thoughts in the comments, and let's explore these fascinating ideas together.